So the effect we're going to be creating today is a brick building effect and the main technique that this uses is a particle system and then we'll be doing a bit of compositing at the end just to give the motion blur. So the way we're going to start is by building a whole brick wall and then we're going to cut our design into it later. So the first thing we're going to do is add a plane and scale it into a roughly a brick shape and then we're going to add an array modifier to it and the amount of bricks we choose to have in our wall will kind of dictate the resolution of our text that we cut into it as each brick is almost going to kind of be a pixel that makes up the uh, text so the more we have the more detailed our text will be I'm then going to add a second array and this time instead of on the X it's going to be on the Z and it's going to be minus one we can't see it because we haven't applied our rotation so I'll press Control A and rotation and scale and so you can see all the outlines of our bricks and obviously the way bricks work is you have a brick and then one is shifted over so we're just going to try and shift them over so they're roughly in the middle and that looks about right we're then going to add a third array and this will create the rest of the rows so again it's going to be 0 on x and minus 1 on the z and then now we've got our brick wall so I'm just going to scale this down a bit and make sure it can fit in our camera view and then what we're going to do is apply these arrays to the mesh so now we have one big mesh but we're not actually going to be using this object as the brick wall this is merely going to emit a particle system which is going to be made up of the bricks so to do that we're going to add a brick object so I'm just going to tab into edit mode shift E to duplicate this face P to bring up the separate menu and we're going to choose the selection so now we have a new brick on its own I'm then going to extrude it on the Y axis just so we've got a brick shape rotate it on the Z axis by 90 and then Control alt shift c and put the origin to the geometry so we've got the origin in the middle and then just scale it out a bit and we're going to apply the rotation and the scale and then we're just going to quickly set up a material now and this will be a red material I'm going to put up the specular intensity and the hardness and then I'm going to fake a reflection by mapping an image onto the reflection channel so I'm going to choose an HDR image click both so we can see the texture I'm then going to set the saturation to zero and the mapping to be reflection and then I'm going to set the influence of the color to be 0.1 and if we look up we can see it's giving a fake reflection and the reason we're doing it now is it's just easier because we're actually going to duplicate this brick to make several other colors so I'm going to press shift D and X and moving along and then pressing shift R which repeats the last action we're going to create a few more bricks and so we're going to create the different materials from now so I'm just going to press the number to make it local change this to yellow make it individual and then blue and then we're going to do the other colors So now that we've got all of them, I'm going to select them all and press Ctrl G to group them. And now we're going to set up the particle system which will distribute these bricks into a brick pattern on this wall. So we'll go over to the particle system tab, we'll add a new one. The number of uh, particles we're going to use is going to be the number of faces and that is 2058. We're going to have it lasting for 120 frames and the particles will live for 250 or the duration of your animation we'll turn off random and we'll make sure there is only one particle per face by just putting this up to one we'll turn off the normal which is kind of the speed that they'll move at so we're putting that to zero and then we're actually putting the z direction up to eight so they're going to move upwards and we'll put the randomness up to 0.5 for rotation we'll change it to global x which is why we rotated them to be on this x-axis because I know that this setting works we don't need to change anything in the physics we're going to change it to a group and then we're going to choose the group we made and we're going to say to pick random we'll then turn off the gravity because again we want them going upwards and not to be drawn down and then I'm just going to start increasing the size because we can just start to see them so I'll just increase the size so we can see all the bricks 
So I'm then going to also make sure that rotation and scale are applied to all of these bricks. So I press Ctrl A, rotation and scale. And we can start to see some kind of effect. We've got a lot of bricks going on. But one thing that's wrong is that we want to see the unborn particles. Now we can start to see what's going on. So I'm basically going to reduce the scale down. Just holding shift and dragging, we can see what scale we want for the bricks. And I can see that that about works. So then we go back to beginning. And because it's starting to slow down, because we've got so many particles, this is a good point to cut our design into the wall. So we're not dealing with quite so many particles. So if I just enable this other layer, and then move it in front, you can just see I've got a text object. And we're going to use this as a template as to where we want our bricks. So I'm just going to move it so it's in the middle of the wall. And then selecting this original object, I'm just going to turn off the particle system for a second. And what we're going to do, we're going to delete any face which isn't within the boundaries of this text. And to do that quite quickly, so I'm going to press C to bring up Circle Select. And I'll just enlarge it a bit. And then I'm just going to draw around in the boundary of the text. And then I'm just going to go around and refine which bricks I want selected. And so these faces that we've got selected are the eventual bricks that we're going to end up with. So we want to make sure we get it right. If you find that you're selecting too many, you can just use the middle mouse button and you can deselect. So that should just about do it. So I'll then press Control i to select every other face and then delete faces. So now we're left with just our text and it's made up of bricks now. So we will hide this other layer because we don't need the template. And then we'll just enable the particle system again. And you can see it's a bit wrong and that's just because it hasn't recalculated the new positions. So press back and everything's jumped into place. But of course we don't need uh, as many particles as we have at the minute because we only have 397 faces. So we can change it from 2000 to 397. And so if I just play through, you can see we're getting particles flying away. Now, just because I wanted the particles to start from this end, I'm going to unwrap our text by select everything in new and then project from view. And then over in the texture tab for the particles, I'm going to press new. It's going to be a blend and a ramp. I'm going to switch these colors around, change it to be vertical, and make sure it's affecting the time. And the map we're going to use is the UV. Switch into edit mode, change to the UV editor, What's going to happen is, if you've seen some of my other tutorials, you might already know this. The black is going to be mapped onto the top of this and the white onto the bottom. And where it's black, it's going to start emitting the particles from first. And where it's white, is going to emit them last. And one extra thing we're going to do is rotate it slightly. And it just gives a slightly nicer effect and a bit more control. So you just press back to recalculate. So now we're calculating from the other end and we're getting this nice effect. One thing I'm going to do is make, uh, turn off the emitter in the render just to make sure that's not rendered. I'm then also going to duplicate this whole uh, particle system. Press Shift D and then Y. And this is just so we get a bit of extra thickness to our object. So if I press back, you can see we've got an extra row of bricks. But at the minute they're the same color. So I'm just going to change this seed value up here. This seed value basically says pick different random numbers where random numbers are used. And we're using random numbers to pick which brick is displayed. So now we get different colored bricks displayed. But at the minute they're both going to go at the same time. So we don't really get the benefit of seeing them. So what I'm going to do is select this uh, particle system that's behind. When we're going to get this to emit slightly later. So at frame 5 and end at 125. And because we can't quite see the effect, I'm actually going to use an explode modifier to hide this original mesh. So just explode and then do the same for this one. 
and it basically just means the uh, faces are going off with the particles. That doesn't really matter because that's not the effect we want. It just enables us to see what's going on. And something I forgot to do was uh, make sure this particle system was unique so the minute they're both sharing the same settings. So I'm just going to press the two next to it and we're going to change this back to emitting first. Press back to recalculate Alt A. And you can see the first row of bricks emits first, revealing the bricks behind, and it just gives a bit of a nicer effect and kind of gives more thickness to the wall. And that's pretty much the whole effect. A few more things I'm going to do. I have another scene up here which just contains a background, and this is going to replace the background in the other scene because it's going to make it far quicker to render. So what I've done, I've rendered this out and saved it as an image, and then in the compositor we'll add it back in, and it'll just save us some render time. So to set that up, we're just going to make sure the shading is set to straight alpha, and that means the sky won't render, and it means we can composite that background in. We're also going to make sure that vector is on, and that'll enable us to do a bit of 2D motion blur in the compositor. And then I also have a plane on another layer, and I'll just move it up so that the text is on it. And all this has is a basic material with its shadow setting to be shadows only, so it'll be transparent apart from the shadows. And one, one last thing we're going to do is just enable environment lighting, and this is the only actual lighting we're going to use in the scene, and then we're going to render. And you can see we're getting a quite nice effect. If you remember, we uh, mapped that HDR image onto these bricks, and so they've all got slightly different brightness values. So now we'll do some compositing. So over in the node editor, I'll just go over to the compositing nodes. We want to use nodes, we want to use the backdrop, and then I'm just going to add in an output viewing node so we can see what's going on. And so here we've got our original render. I'm then going to add in our background image, which I rendered out earlier. So it's just an image node. And here is the background. And all this scene has is environment lighting and a curved wall, and it just gives a bit of a gradient effect. But back to the compositing, we're going to add these two images together with a colour alpha over node. So I'll just put this one in the bottom. And then switch them around. And then you can see we've got a weird outline. So we're just going to do convert pre multiply, and that just tells it to take into account the transparent pixels. And then the final thing we're going to do is add the filter and then the vector blur. And so the image we're going to use is the image we've just combined, but we're going to use the vector from the original render layer and the Z value from the original, and then we'll plug that into the viewer and the composite. And you can see we're already getting the effect. And I think curved produces better results, so we just put that on. And then you can always put the samples up or put the blur down and fine tune it as you want. After we've done all this, you would render out your image sequence to uh, the directory that you want, and then the way that we're going to reverse the frames, which is the very final step in this whole process, is to go over to the video sequence editor, we'll change to the view where we can see the video and our strip, and we will add an image. I've got the rendered image sequence here, and we'll just select everything by press pressing A, add image strip, we'll drag it along to the beginning, if I just press N, and with this strip selected, all we're going to do is under filter, select backwards, and so all our video has been reversed. So if I just play this through, you can now see we've got our text building up. So it's really quite simple, and once you've got this whole particle system set up, all you have to do is change this original mesh and obviously change the number of uh, particles to match the number of faces and it will work for any object so you could have kept the whole wall there you can do more text or less you can have it building objects and it really is quite versatile the only thing is and this is the downside at the minute while we haven't got the node based particles 
is that we can't reverse the particle effects without reversing the frames. And that does mean it's going to be slightly more complex if you wanted to combine this effect with some other physics or some other animation, because you're going to have to do it all backwards and then reverse it later. I hope this tutorial has been of some use to you. It's quite a simple effect and it's quite quick to do. So I hope you've learned something and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please say so in the comments if you'd like me to do a tutorial on something else. I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.